kindness, hate, and quirks all fit into the same category. At first glance, it seems appropriate that kindness and hate could go together, but it's not clear how quirks belong in the same bucket. In this video, I'll explain why a quirk is much more like kindness and hate than it is a tiny ball bearing. You use categories not only to bunch things, but also to understand them better, especially when you consider them in a certain light. For example, a pencil, pen, and paintbrush fit into a category if you consider them all as ways to get your thoughts onto a medium for sharing. How can I put a quirk in a group with kindness and hate? It is much easier than you ever thought, and it will eventually lead to a totally different way of seeing your world. First, you need to agree with Einstein and most other physicists that a quark is a bundle of energy. Because energy and matter are readily convertible, they are the same thing. I prefer thinking of a quark as energy instead of matter because matter leads to thoughts of tiny BBs that are orbiting each other. And they are nothing like that. They are bundles of energy that are constantly changing and moving around. Let's see how a quark resembles the other things in its bucket. Start with a man who shows kindness. He takes sandwiches to several homeless people in his town. He also helps people to their feet when they fall. He donates to the Salvation Army and gives clothes to the goodwill, etc. These are all acts of kindness that the man demonstrates. If I ask you to define kindness, you would think in terms of actions similar to these. It would be quite unusual for you to try to define kindness by its shape, size, or color. Those types of descriptors do not work for kindness. Like kindness, hate is also defined indirectly by its activities. You see it as mean words, thrown rocks, or triggers pulled. As a matter of fact, minus its actions, hate would be tough to define. And it certainly doesn't have a size, shape, or color. A quark as a bundle of energy also has no size, shape, or color, and it is also known to scientists by its actions. As protons, which contain quarks, are forced to collide with each other, quark interactions with other bundles of energy are observed. This gives some insight into the behavior of a quark. It also shares other attributes with the kindness-hate group. None of them are localized to a specific point but exist in a general area. A quark jitters around within the area of a proton, while kindness and hate somewhere within the person who displays it. In addition, the bundled energy of a quark, like kindness, is not divisible, since there are no pieces composing it. Its existence is a brute fact. This is a difficult concept, since we are used to understanding things by the building blocks composing it. For example, your body is an aggregate of organs which are composed of tissues, tissues of cells, then smaller molecules, atoms, subatomic particles, to the elementary bundles of energy like a quark. And a quark has no further parts. It is what it is. However, the most important thing, time, kindness, hate, and quarks together, is their source. They all originate from a person. The person down the street may be the source of either kindness or hate, or both. In the same manner, a person is the source of the energy that is the essence of a quark. Wait, you don't agree? Consider an example of a pool table with 15 pool balls, a cue ball, and a cue stick ready for the break. A person takes the pool stick and intentionally causes it to move. The energy of the stick gets transferred to the cue ball and subsequently the pool balls. It took a person to start it all. You might say that it's possible for a machine to move the cue stick. That's true, but a person has to push a button with the intent of starting the machine. You might also say that software could control the start of the process, but it would still take a person's intent to write the software. I propose that all energy is the result of intent, and the energy bundle called a quark is really the smallest piece of it. Since energy existed before man, the person creating it is not a man. 
I will develop this idea further in future videos. Please click the thumbs up icon if you like this video. Also leave your comments and questions below. Until next time, remember, humility, thanks, and joy.